Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the one and the only How to Film Weddings podcast, the biggest wedding filmmaker podcast on planet Earth that we know of, which is neat. My name is John Bunn, and I'm joined by my best, goodest, beardedest buddy, Mr. Nicholas Deep Nuggets Miller, the first. Nick, you know, how in the frick are you? I'm great. You know, I like for a long time, like for years, we've been saying that this is the largest wedding filmmaking podcast on the planet. Like we've been telling people that in like yeah, whenever we it. sell sponsors, we've been like using that as a pitch and stuff. I mean, we think it's true. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that part. <laughs> we I think mean, it's it is true. true. It, it, there are, it is, there's thousands it, of dozens at this point. Thousands of dozens of downloads and episodes. Yes. Not thousands, but dozens of episodes. Yes, that's accurate. Anyway, I'm I'm doing well. Doing good. That's I, good. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I have the month of September off, which is in the world of wedding filmmaking in the Midwest, saying that you have the month of September off is kind of like, what? You do? Yes. Yes, we do. We don't have anything until October the first, and so it's it's kind of nice not to. That, uh, that sounds great. You've been working after having butt off. Yeah, yeah. We we had four back to back weekends of flights, and then before that, Jen and I took in a, a family vacation to Yosemite. So it was we had six weekends in a row where we were flying in a row, and so it's nice to uh, to be home. For Sit a bit. on your biscuit at home. Yeah. Sit on well, the biscuit. I, Sit on. I do Nick's not buns. Have. I do not have the month off. I'm shooting this weekend in Tulsa, my first Tulsa wedding of the year. I shot in the Tulsa area in July, but this is like the first wedding where I'm going to go film it just on one day. I'm not doing the rehearsal. I'm going to film it, and then I'm coming home. Okay. Neat. It's going to be great. So been working out the details with Joel, my second shooter. And then next weekend, I shoot in the middle of Oklahoma for uh it's gonna be a ridiculously nice wedding can't wait to do it so neat those are my only two weddings and then october 1st i'm gonna be in the baton rouge area so if you're in that area let me know because we're gonna like try to meet up with some people let's go spell g-e-a-u-x yes yeah i think that's how they spell that there yeah let's go um (laughs) It's it's a new week and there's a lot of good things going on, Nick. And you and That's I stuff. have been having with our team lots of like big picture conversations about how to film weddings, mm-hmm. where it's mm-hmm. going, how mm-hmm. we plan to expand and offer more education and just help more people moving into the future. Um, mm-hmm. We've been mm-hmm. having lots of conversations like that. And we've also personally been taking less and less weddings and how to film weddings is becoming more and more of like our full-time job and nick and i live in this world where we want to keep shooting weddings but we also want to keep growing how to film weddings but you kind of got to shoot weddings to stay relevant so we're like finding this balance but the more that we spend time doing how to film weddings the more time we want to spend doing how to film weddings so we're both taking on less and less weddings, and it got me thinking um, just about this this whole brand, how to film weddings. You know, I don't know when you started listening, uh, or when you started like you found out about Nick and myself, or if this is the first time tuning in or whatever. But um, this has become something that's like much bigger and much more a part of our lives than we could have ever imagined, mm-hmm. and we get asked a lot from time to time. Well, how did it get started? What did what was the story? How did that go? And like, we want to kind of lay a foundation in this week's episode about kind of why how to film weddings exist and where we are going. And so, I yeah. thought it would be fun. Nick agreed um, for us to kind of like take a look back at this whole brand and say, um, you know, what what has happened? What have we had to do to get here? We hope it's inspiring. If you're on a journey with your business and different things like that. Um, so Nick, I've talked a lot, but yeah. my qu- my question to you is, kind of, what were you up to leading, like leading up to me reaching out to you? But, mm-hmm. uh, what was what was the life like, right, leading up to? Yeah. Whenever you and I first connected. Yeah, and so, but before I I get into that, I I do want to say that um, 
I, I, I chuckled. You said people ask us a lot from time to time, which to me doesn't <laughs> say a lot. Like I was, I was people have asked couple. us once. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> but you know, again, we have this, uh, you know, big education brand and we have, you know, a large Facebook group and, uh, you know, podcasts and all that stuff. And it's so easy for people to, uh, you know, look at that and be like, man, yeah, you're able to do this stuff because you have this big thing. Like it magically appeared out of nowhere. And, uh, this, well, next month, October, Oct- no, yeah, in October, it will be our four year anniversary of launching the podcast. So j- just, just for, for that. And then we actually launched our YouTube channel, uh, when we kind of launched the idea in March of 18, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, <clears throat> um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's been a while since we've been doing this. And so just, just an encouragement to you, if the, that's the power of, uh, showing up and being consistent and continuing to do something and having that vision for it. Okay. So don't, don't think, Oh, you guys, you know, you can take West let it, less weddings because of this thing and all that. Yes, it's true, but we've spent a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of focus building this thing. So that was me in 2016, 2017. Um, I, as I've shared here on the podcast, I was a youth pastor and I did that for 11 years and I left that job in the, what was it? June of 2017. So I just hit my five year mark, uh, earlier this year where I have been 100% totally self-employed. So left that job. I just, it, it was, the timing was right. And if you ever see me in person and you want to know the exact story, the ins and out of that, you know, hit me up and I'll, and I'll talk to you through, you know, my whole process of going through that. But I left that job. Um, I, I wanted to, I felt called and I uh, felt excited and I really wanted to do something for myself full time. And so I went to the wedding video world and I, I loved it. Uh, the thing with going full time after you haven't been full time and also going from two incomes to one income, you know, it's, it, it, it that, that's just difficult. And so I, I went to this and my income stream was cut in half. Even though Jen and I had quite a bit of money saved up, we knew that we saw this was happening and, and, and going to happen. Uh, but it was, it was quite, uh, a lot to do that. And so I was taking everything that I could. Um, I think the year that I left, I still had something like, oh, I don't know. It was in the teens, if not 20 weddings left for the year. So I had lots of income and stuff coming in, you know, for that fall and, you know, just continued to do that stuff. That fall was when I went to venture for the first time, uh, the very, the original venture. And, uh, from that, one of the things that I got was, Hey, just put yourself out there, do education videos, make, make content, you know, especially if you wanted to get into education. And I, I'm sure if you go and ask Kaylin or David or those people that were the original ones, I was, um, probably really annoying at that venture because I kept on trying to interject myself as an authority whenever they had like no <laughs> clue who I was. And, uh, so I'm sure that they would be like, yeah, that guy, um, yeah, we're not gonna, <laughs> Anyway, um, I and wish so I, was I just there so bad. I you probably you should have. Anyway, so I started putting out some of these education type videos on our YouTube channel, and it was about wasn't it about in two thousand seventeen? It it was it was seventeen into eighteen, mm-hmm. right? Uh, that we started that, and it was because I had put out this education type video that. John was really interested in doing that type of stuff. And so he reached out to me. Um, He needed a second shooter, but I think he really reached out to me because he liked my YouTube video. Um, And then I'll let let him tell that story. But, you know, I had been full-time for six months, I guess, whenever John and I uh, decided to, whenever I second shot for John for that that first time, and then three months later is when we launched How to Film Weddings, the YouTube side of things. So, yeah. And I look at this and like listen to this story, like the origin origin story of how to film weddings. And it's like if you wouldn't have taken the step into going full time, you wouldn't have taken the step into going to venture, you wouldn't have taken the step into making, you know, that video that I ended up seeing. So if you rewind to the end of 2017 for me, I went I actually went full time in the the very beginning of 2010. So I've been full time now for like this is my thirteenth year. Um but like five, six years in, 
I had been asked to be on a couple of podcasts that were out back then and like start like started interacting in the Facebook groups and people were like how or like asking me lots of questions whenever I would tell them what I was charging or how I was running business or I had multiple employees and things like that. And I, I knew that education was like, ooh, we could, I, I could really get into this. Just like uh, I'm sure a lot of you um, out there are like, well, I've got cameras, I've got microphones, I, I've got something to say, and a lot of people do get into education. Um, and so I actually started recording content. I, it's somewhere out in the world. Uh, my friend Paul recorded it for me, but I remember sitting down and recording a whole bunch of wedding content. Uh, on how to do wedding stuff, but like it just felt flat. I knew, I was self aware enough to know like this is good, but it's not like there's nothing about this is going to make people like be like, oh, I want to tune into this, so, you know. And I I realized after having lots of failed businesses, like this is not the right timing. I need to get better. I'm not just going to go launch and do this thing until I feel like I'm really ready to put myself out there. Because in the wedding education world, you kind of get one shot. Um, and I just wanted to, I, I peeled back like 2015 to 17 and just said for two years, I'm just going to invest into relationships with people, get to know people. I went to Ray Roman's workshop. I went to in focus, the event, uh, which used to exist in Texas and met a lot of people. And anyway, 2017 had a, one of my second daughter, Daisy was born, but that summer is when the crap hit the fan with another business I had that was failing and I was like hemorrhaging money, having a, almost a nervous breakdown, panic attacks, those kinds of things, almost in bankruptcy, and had to let go of 10 employees on October 1st of 2017 while Nick was at Venture or close to it. And by December 1, I had everybody, I had let everybody go. I had 21 weddings in backlog. I was all by myself. And I was just like, oh, this is, but because I had let all those people go, I had, the whole business to myself. I had a long way to go, but I'm scrolling Facebook one day and I see this bald headed, way less bearded dude. Um, the still beard, beard was much, much shrunker. Yeah. We'll have to find that. But I found this video and it was like, <clears throat> ah, that feels like what I want it to feel like. That's what I want my stuff to feel like. That's the miss. That, that vibe was like the missing thing. I was like, I know I got the education. I know I got the, like, stuff to help people, but I, it doesn't feel like it's going to have teeth. And so I saw Nick's video and was like, this is it. And I like, this is the kind of vibe I like. And I looked him up and added him, added him or whatever and saw he was in Wichita and I was in Tulsa. And I was like, hey, we're only three hours away. And that was it. I didn't think anything else of it. But then I needed a second shooter and was like doing a wedding in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma City. It's two hours away from both of us. And I was like, hey, I will reach out to this guy and see. And I remember you saying yes, and I'm like, I'll meet you at a firehouse subs. We'll get lunch together. We'll talk through the wedding day. Uh, what was your perception working with me on the first wedding? Like, what was your thought going into that uh, firehouse subs, then filming the day? Because I know a lot of stuff happened on the day where you were like, what, what the heck? Uh, in a good way and in a bad way, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. You know, I, I don't I don't know if I truly remember. I th I think it's really interesting that um, like I think if I wouldn't have been in that position where one I had just gone full time and I had ne I needed I was more um, uh, I was taking jobs so it would pay me. You know, like, mm. like that, that was the situation that I was in because I was new to this and I wanted to support my family and all that stuff. And so I think it was one of those right time, right places kind of things where if, if it would have been, you know, a year later and you asked me to second, Hey, can you drive this three and a half hours to this venue uh, south of you to film this wedding? Can you do that? I'd probably like, mm, no, sorry. Like I'm, I'm busy or I don't want to do that or what? Like, so I think it was like, you know, right, right place, right time. Um, but I remember, I remember just going and doing it and thinking it was great. Other than I forgot my gimbal that I told John that I would bring. No, no, no this was, no, no, this was, you didn't forget. This the wasn't that on one. The first one. The first, I didn't forget one, it on the first one. The first one was where, uh, we were in Norman. We shot in Norman and it was, I, 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 I told you how much I was getting paid and I saw your draw. Your oh yeah. Drop. That yeah, was yeah, this yeah. one. That's what okay. I was wanting you to. So like we were filming it and you, you asked me, 
what do you want me to set my color balance at? And I was like, I don't know what that is. Auto is fine. And then I remember your face being like, okay. And then also, uh, like, we got to talking by the end of the night, and I was like, yeah, I'm getting like 7,500 bucks for this wedding or something. And you were just like, what? And I remember saying something to you that I think haunted you uh, for a little bit, which was, I've watched your films. If my films were as good as yours, I'd be charging 10000 for this wedding. And I think at the time, maybe you were charging 3000 or something. It was like around that. three, somewhere around three. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we did that wedding. It was great. You helped me out. You had to shoot on auto. It probably killed your soul a little bit. Um, but we went on our merry way. And like, I think another month later, I needed another second shooter in, in Tulsa. And that's whenever you forgot the gimbal. Um, at Southern Hills, where they spent like twenty five hundred dollars on uh, pedals. Oh to yeah, be they, shooting. they yeah, yeah they they had they had a rose petal confetti cannon, and John was like, yeah, they probably spent twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars on that, yeah, right there, just, just shooting that. flowers into the air. So it was a pretty big budget wedding again. And after that wedding, I remember Nick reaching out and saying, hey. Um, I would love to hire you for a mentor session because I, I want to charge more money. And I was like, well, I want to hire you for a mentor session because I want my films to look like yours. Mm -hmm. And so we just started having like these conversations and quoted each other mentor sessions. They're like, why don't I just trade out some time and you trade out and we can just like help each other. And, and that's kind of it. That's, there wasn't anything else really in mind. I don't remember if, do you remember the first time we talked about maybe just offering it like i know that i had i know so, that you have a fun story but so uh, yeah so um you know we we kind kind of gone back and forth about that and then i don't know who it was that came up with the idea of like actually like jumping into the education space you know for youtube content and that sort of thing i don't i don't remember if it was you and i was like i, I kind of hitched my hitched my cart to your horse or if it just kind of came up like I I don't exactly remember that story uh, but it was um, it, it was a prime time um, for education I think in the wedding world and this was one of the reasons again we're talking about right place right time um, where wedding film school Craig Adams had had this thing for a long time and it would seem to be the education YouTube space um, in, you know, this was 2015, 2016, that like that time. And then he had kind of walked away and stopped making stuff and he was very inconsistent. And so John and I were like, Hey, why don't we, we, do, we kind of do this. And so we went back and forth. And the story that I love to tell is that John was like, okay, like Nick, I'm willing to do this with you, but I, it's my thing. Like, I'm in charge. I own it. Like I'll pay you a salary or something, but I, I, it, it it's mine. Kind of. I mean, John's got that's, John's that's shaking his harsh. head. That's way more that, harsh than it was. It's way more harsh. It's way more harsh. But that 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 was the gist. That was the gist of it. And then, but as we, but as we, you know, started talking, and and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like that idea or whatever. I, I I'm gonna what, fix. I, you, you're getting you're, it wrong. You're gonna fix no, you're it. Not, I'm no. telling you wrong. Okay. No, you, you're you not. Fix it. I do remember at a certain point, like I had already recorded all this stuff, and I already had a plan. And I, my plan was in 2018 was I was launching education. Like mm. I was gonna do education stuff. And I, I don't started, know if I knew that. I think my plan was to like see if I could hire you to like show me how you were recording your stuff because the light looked good, and I didn't know anything about studio lighting, as many of you have told me for five years now. <laughs> uh, and, uh, hey. You look great now. You look hey, real good thanks, now. Man. I'm, I'm working on it. My YouTube video setup, I'm very proud of. But anywho, um, it's probably because I moved to Sony. That's all it really took. <laughs> but uh, just trying to upset as many people as possible that are still here. No, I remember kind of, I had a plan where I wanted to have workshops, film them, and sell them online. Like, we could just sell workshops. And I remember telling Nick, like, I'd love to do education. I don't know if you're interested in doing something together, but this idea, this brilliant idea I have for these workshops being recorded, I want full ownership of that. Like if, if we ever do this, I want full ownership. Mm -hmm. That was what I said I wanted to own. Okay. And I kind of was that, like, who I is took this that guy? As, I took this that as, hey, here's this guy that's, you know, um, he's like, I, I, I'd love to work with you. I, I'd love to like do all this stuff, but it's it's all mine. Like yeah. you, no. you, you can be an employee of mine or something, but it's mine. No. No. Well, I mean, no, that wasn't the idea. But it was like, I remember 
uh, having conversations with you and just saying, like, what do you think? Would you want to do education? Would you, like, it could be cool because I know so much about business. You know so much about shooting and editing. Like, we could just basically mentor each other and put it on YouTube and see and started thinking about it. And I was kind of leery. Like, I, I didn't know if I could trust Nick. Like, it seemed too good to be true. I was like, this guy has a wife around the same amount of time I've had a wife. He has two kids the same age as my age. He's in Wichita. We're both Christians. We're both small business owners. We're both... It's like all these things that was like really similar in who we were as humans and our values and stuff. And that lined up. And I was like, I don't know. I, I've, I'd been burned by some people. So I was like, let's tread lightly and just see what happens. And maybe we'll do some education. And then one day I got a... Like we started brainstorming names. And I was like, I, I, I need a name for my education, Nick, if you can help me with that. Like, it was kind of my thing in my heart. Uh, and then, like, one day, Nick messaged me, and he was like, what do you think about how to film weddings? And I remember in that moment being like, okay, I guess we're going to do this thing together. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, you came up with the name. Like, you came up, and then you, you started. And then I, I trademarked like, oh, I it. it. And I trademarked yeah. it, and it's solely mine. The trademark it is, is no. it's now yeah. next. No, and yeah. I just remember you being like so into the branding and design and stuff. And we started just dreaming and brainstorming about it, and like we could put YouTube videos out, and we're going to get YouTube famous, and like that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a YouTube channel. And I just remember you coming back and being like, "What do you think of this logo?" And I was like, "This is awesome! Like, this is so much better than I could make." And you had your yellow lines and your yellow and black and the how to film weddings slanted thing and. Uh, I just remember being like, this is so cool. And you were like, here's five or six beats. Do you like these beats for YouTube videos? And I'm just like, oh my goodness. And then you made like all these motion graphics for videos and stuff. And I was like, this is so cool. Like, this is so much fun. Like, and we just started going like mm -hmm. March of 2018. We put like, I just started, I, I remember setting up a camera in my living room in my old house no idea how to light myself, I, like no idea what I was doing. And like, Nick, do you think this looks good? And he's like, yeah, sure. Good try. Uh, and I, don't, I don't know if I said that. We just got, we got going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we got going and it was definitely one of those things where, um, I think at that time, the perception more of YouTube and, and even in, you know, 2018, it was at the tail end of that. But, you know, we had heard people from 2011 and 12 and 13 when YouTube had really, was really paying their educators and their, their content creators and that sort of stuff. Of like, we're going to, we're going to get rich on making YouTube videos and, and all this stuff. And, uh, yeah, that, that did, that didn't happen after, I, I mean, we were, we were fairly diligent in posting months, for, yeah. for, three for months. about three months. Um, but then John and I both had our businesses and we just got slammed. And so we probably went on a three month hiatus where we quit summer, posting yeah. stuff. Uh, summer came and then at, in, in that fall, some stuff, uh, we were just talking or whatever. And, um, you know, you were, you were like talking about, Hey, um, here's an idea. Why don't we just like record a podcast or record our conversation. I don't even think the idea of podcast was really mm -hmm. in the mind at that time about, you know, me booking big weddings or something. And we did it. And, you know, the equipment that we used was really shady and, and not awesome. But at the end of it, we we're like, Janky, hey, we not just shady. It wasn't shady. It was, oh, it wasn't it was shady. Was it was janky. That, janky. There you go. Yeah, there, yeah. You go. there you go. Sh <laughs> so shady, shady would stole it. <laughs> Sh Shady would have been like I was using the microphone that was just sitting outside my neighbor's house and dragged it in my window or something like that. Yeah, but, that would be shady. Um, <clears throat> anyway, at the end, we we're like, hey, did we just like record a podcast? Like, did we do that? Yeah. And then we just said, okay, we're going to do this. And from that moment on, like – we had really had that discussion of, hey, I think that this is potentially a money-making business. I think that this is something that could benefit us in the long run, but how long are you committed to doing this before mm -hmm. before we even take a paycheck or something? And both and I were like, hey, you know, I, I, I'm in this, it was at least 12 months, if not 24 months, where we decided, hey, you know, if I'm not getting anything back for a while, like I know it could take some time to build. And yeah. so that was kind of the start of that. And that was the journey in the podcast. Whenever, um, I think it was our 10th episode when we had Ray Roman on initially that that's whenever things just kind of, that was a major step for what we yeah. were doing in our business. Yeah. I remember that first season of 2018, kind of like the wedding season, getting us busy. And like, we were like, man, we got to keep posting YouTube videos. We got to be consistent. And my whole thing has always been like, the crock pot method, like you got to just take it slow and steady. Mm -hmm. And like, we weren't being consistent. 
And I remember like catching back up thinking, ah, oh, we're not going to end up doing how to film weddings. Like this is not going to, and like, well, we could try to do like, to stay consistent with our other businesses, we could try to like record a podcast, which is just audio. Like, let's do that. Like, and we can, you know, I can interview you. And then it was like Phil Harbuck, who was a friend that I had met at in focus. Um, like I asked him if he wanted to be on the show. I know that Rachel would love stories. TV was starting to do some stuff with wedding filmmakers. So I asked her to be on the show and we just started asking people and figuring it out and taking steps and mm -hmm. saying, oh, we can be consistent with a podcast. Like, you can batch record these things. You can. And then I do remember sitting down with Nick and being like, hey, I'm willing to put in the extra time for up to 24 months without getting paid. And if we're going to do this, I need you to also be willing to do this for 24 months. Because um, the goal was always like, I knew. I knew the look on people's faces or the tone in their messages whenever I would give them advice they would do it and then they would message back or, or, you know, FaceTime or whatever and say, I did this. I just booked my biggest wedding. I just, you know, learned how to shoot this way. I just, and like, I just, I loved that. I love the idea mm -hmm. of teaching people how to not work for someone else to get to work for, for themselves. Um, and we, we started talking about big, booking big weddings. And then I started asking you questions about shooting or color grading. And we started just asking people and we were consistent. I mean, 10 episodes seems like, oh, 10 episodes, but that was like two and a half months of us just mm -hmm. putting out episodes before, you know, we, we asked Ray to be on, we, we asked uh, Matt Johnson to be on early. And then we asked Patrick Moreau from uh, Muse Storytelling and Still Motion. Like that was, I think the first episode that I did video on and I filmed my computer screen with my camera. Nick was supposed to be on with me and he got sick and like Patrick's is like Emmy award winning. And so like, I remember just sweating bullets in my office. My lighting's <laughs> terrible. My camera's right over my, my iMac. Oh. I look terrible. I'm shiny. I got crappy white headphones on and like a film camera with a 70 to 200 filming my screen. I didn't sync the video the right way. So it's like half a second off. It was terrible, but it was a step and we kept just yeah. taking steps. Um, Nick, we're probably at a at a, a break. Let's let's head to break and we come okay. back. We're gonna talk about like getting sponsored, what that looked like, mm -hmm. how we put out our first products, our courses, and all that. So we will talk to you right after this break. Nick and I have to tell you about one of our favorite places to upload our wedding films, and that is Love Stories TV. Love Stories TV is one of the best free resources for us wedding filmmakers. The best part is they are bringing the couples to us. All we have to do is upload our films and we are good to go. Upload unlimited wedding films to your completely free business page. Setup is easy and your films can be live in just minutes. Now is the perfect time to start uploading to Love Stories TV. So head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash lovestoriestv to check out all of the details and see how Love Stories TV is giving away $10,000 in cash to wedding filmmakers just like you. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash lovestoriestv to start uploading and connecting with the right couples today. Hi, it's Michael from Weditor. We want to thank everyone for the incredible support we've received since sponsoring How to Film Weddings. Yes, we've had some growing pains, but we've had far more wins. And we're doing something that's never been done. We're a remote team of over 50 editors in 10 countries. I often joke that we're as much a logistics company as we are a creative company. Right now, demand is off the charts. And we don't just say yes to everyone and scramble to figure it out. That's why we're asking you to help us help more of you. In short, we're looking for more talented weditors, part-time or full-time, work from where you want, when you want, as long as you hit deadlines and deliver quality. It's a chance to get paid while growing as an editor. Our project managers work with you, explaining why something feels right or doesn't, because there's always a reason. If you're interested, we'd love to hear from you. Go to weditor.com slash editor and fill out our form. All right, we are back from break. I am with my bestest, goodest, beardedest buddy, beardedest buddy, Mr. Nick Miller. We're just talking mm -hmm. about how to film weddings and just now getting to how we got going. Yeah. And Nick, after we got going, what was the next thing? What, like, I remember uh, us reaching out to Musicbed, seeing if they'd be interested in sponsoring us. They said no. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I... <clears throat> before before we get into that, 
stuff. It, it was pretty early on um, after we started the podcast where John and I had conversations and we were like, what's, what's the point of this podcast? Like, why are we doing this? And we came up very, very early um, with saying that we wanted to, um, you know, uh, help the wedding filmmaking industry. We wanted to make wedding filmmakers better. We want like, we want to give stuff away. We want to educate people. We want to help people. We want to make, um, you know, it, it always seems like the, uh, video is the, uh, you know, uh, younger sibling to the photographer, right? That the photographer is the one that walks in and rules a room. And we wanted to just elevate the wedding film industry. We wanted to make people better so that they could charge more money so that they could walk in and know how to work with photographers and work with planners and all that stuff. So very early on, we said, we want to elevate the wedding filmmaking industry. So, so there was that. Another thing that John and I have, um, like always been, um, haven't like shied away from is that we said we have always intended to make money with this. That doesn't mean that we can't give stuff away and can't help people and elevate the industry and that sort of thing. But, um, our, our North star, our shining light has not been to make money. It has always been to raise the wedding film industry and help people in the industry. Right. Like I'm, I'm not just making that up. That's correct. Right. Like you're kind of looking at me like, yes, no, no, that's correct. Okay. (laughs) And so, um, as if you have a podcast and you start a podcast, it's really easy to knock out 10, 15, 20, 25 episodes. Like that's, that's not too difficult because most people kind of have an idea about things to go, to go on and things they want to talk about. But it's after you kind of hit that initial threshold of, okay, I've, I've met with people. I've talked with people. I've kind of said what I want to say. What do I do now? And I remember like 30 episodes in or so, like having that conversation like, hey, should we maybe talk about these things or these things or that thing or whatever? And John was like, no, our North Star is wedding, elevating the wedding filmmaking industry. Let's keep doing that. And he he referenced Dave Ramsey about like, hey, man. You listen to Dame Ramsey, he talks about the same thing today that he did a year ago, that he did five years ago, that he did 10 years ago. It's the exact same stuff over and over again. So just being consistent with that. And so because that was our North Star of wanting to elevate the industry, it was easy for us to continue going even whenever stuff got difficult. We reached out to Musicbed. I don't know, maybe around, you know, 10 or 15. It, it was fairly early on yeah. asking if they would be interested in, in uh, sponsoring the podcast. And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember feeling a little defeated and upset about that. But at the same time, it was one of those things where they didn't say, nope, we're done. They said, no, for now. I want you to prove that you are worth it. I want you to prove that you can continue to uh, do this thing and uh, do what you set out to do. And so that's what we did. And I remember another thing that uh, we we felt like we had made it is that uh, Kaylin and Christy with Venture invited us to just come out and be a part of it. You know, mm-hmm. not you know not a paid attendee, but just be, be invited out to be a part of it. And uh, and then like all this at the same time had happened where Music Bed signed it on to be a spo- signed it, signed on to be a sponsor. We got invited to Venture and we opened our digital shop online where we started selling templates and stuff like and that was all within like a 1 month period. It was it was May really of quick. Yep. Yeah, May of 2018. And so um I that's I think the thing that I remember most about that is in life and in business and whatever, there are going to be people that might tell you no, or they might tell you not yet or not right now. If we would have gotten our um, feelings hurt and we just said, "Ugh, I really want to make money. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. I'm not making money. I'm done. Like we wouldn't be where we are today, but because we had that thing of, Hey, we want to help people. And that's at the <clears throat> forefront of this business that we are going to run and this business that we are running that made it so that we could continue to go. And then that just, open the doors for so many other things. Yeah. I remember you, reaching what, out to fix music me, bed. fix me, fix me okay, where fix I, I, I messed up. Oh, I reached out to music bed and they were super kind. They had just done their yearly budget. I didn't know anything about like, Oh, you probably should reach out to people before the year starts or, um, but like I reached out early 2018 and they're like, we just did our whole budget for the year. This sounds great. Um, and then, uh, right around the time uh, of, of venture, I remember getting the call from Levi and Kalen, and they're like, "You guys are doing great things." They've always been such a great like champion of how to film weddings. We love White and Reverie and like the shot that they gave us. Uh, and they're like, "We want you to come out and just like record a podcast at the event." 
and Nick was on a uh, trip and he couldn't be there. And so like I went to venture by myself, pretty terrified that like, what am I doing here? This is like the first public event. I didn't know if people would know who I was. And I remember uh, Darian, who is in our uh, mastermind group now, I, I sat down next to her at an event at venture and was like, Hey, I'm John. And she was like, yeah, I know. And I was just like, <laughs> Oh, okay. I, that was like the first weirdest, you know, thing of like, um, you know, people knowing who we are. We had gone to WPPI earlier in the year and somebody recognized my voice and like turned around and was like, are you John from how to film weddings? And I was like, this is such a trip, like people knowing who I am or, um, but I remember like April or so, uh, music bed was like, Hey, you guys are killing it. We're watching you guys, um, grow your, your following and everything. And it's like, we do want to sponsor you. We found some room in our budget. Like, could you do this? And like, we signed a deal with them and it, it gave us money. But one thing that you were saying that I think is really cool about like this story. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize this. So we started in like January, February of 2018 talking about this. And then it was May of 2019, like 15 months later when we first made a penny mm -hmm. and we weren't consistent every single week. We couldn't be, uh, before we started the podcast, but since we've started the podcast, we committed and every single week we've had an episode for five, four years now. Um, and we were consistent in that we got paid. And instead of Nick and me saying, great, let's keep that money. Uh, let's pay ourselves that money. I remember, uh, saying, why don't we hold on to this money for a, a couple months and just let it grow and see what's up. And at that point, how to film weddings was starting to boom. Facebook mm -hmm. group was, existent at that point we had a few thousand people in it um and our digital template shop was launched we started selling things like that um we we brought on two or three other sponsors in that first year um i, I remember that and being like wow we're getting we, we could get paid a salary now but we decided let's hold off because my next real big idea was like what if we put out a course like what if we put out a full course that was like a $1,500 course and like this could help so many people and it could make us way more than um, what we, you know, what we were getting, you know, and it was like, Nick, are you okay with not taking a penny, um, you know, at all uh, out of this? And we didn't pay ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like we, we started just socking up the money from uh, May of 18 or May of 19 all the way because we paid cash to market and to shoot and to edit and to hire people. We paid cash to release our course, um, which was a lot of money to do that. But we did it with mm -hmm. all, all with cash because I had used debt before and it had bit me in the butt. And I was like, I'm not going into debt for the, like I wanted, like I'd rather just earn this. And we came up with more ideas. We were, you know, speaking at different things. We had sponsors, we had digital templates, all these things. And every time we would make money, we would just put it in the bank account, and that was until January of 2020. And that, to me, uh, it was. I think it. We didn't actually write ourselves a check until February or March of 2020. It was April of 2020 when we wrote ourselves a check. But okay. January okay. is when we first started spending the money because we hired yes. Max. Yes, uh, that's right. To help that's us right. launch our course, and then we put tens of thousands of dollars into advertising the course, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and. I remember releasing that course in uh, like the middle of February of 2020 or the, the beginning of March is what it was. Nope. It was the middle of February. That's right. Because mm -hmm. COVID hit like a week after our course closed, like the course launch closed and just the timing. It was, it was, so we had a, we had a 28 day or a 30 day money back guarantee and COVID hit and really shut everything down with five days left of the money back guarantee. And that cost us. <laughs> yeah, it did. But it was, it, again, like one of those like right place, right, like create, like as we're, as we're talking about this thing, it, it's one of those things where we have worked hard to get where we have gone. We have, um, uh, for the most part, you know, we talk about our spending choices. We talk about the things that we're going to do and we were trying to do the best thing, but there's also some of that right time, right place, right, 
you know, think like the, the thing that we, the big thing that pushed us over to, um, you know, uh, make a course in that stuff, which I know John had probably been thinking about that for a while, but, uh, a guy who was an admin in our group, Larry Marshall, some of you might know who he is. Uh, he had been at something and he met Max somehow, or he had been a part. And so he was like, Hey, um, John, Nick, I want to introduce you to Max, and I think I should let you guys talk. I had absolutely zero clue who this guy Max was. I had, why do I want to talk to him? Like, I knew nothing about it. And then we have this meeting, and at the end of it, we're like, I think we're making a course here. And mm-hmm. so, again, it, it was just all these working hard, but then taking advantage of things that happen in front of us, whether we knew that we were taking advantage of that time or not, you know, that's, that's kind of how it happened. I wanted to add in there too that uh, <coughs> after we got going a few months into the podcast, I hosted a workshop and Blake Polino came to the workshop as a he guest did. of Phil Harbuck. Um, and so that connection got us connected with Blake. We immediately mm-hmm. hit it off. And then 30 something episodes into the podcast, we did start paying him to edit because Nick edited most of the like 25 of the first 32 episodes. And I edited like five of them and Nick was like, please don't edit these anymore. Just I'll do this. You're bad at this. Uh, and I don't know uh, if I said it wasn't that. that it's just like Nick is very particular and it it's important for our brand and it like works. But um, we took money and we said, okay, we're going to rent a place in Wichita and stay for a week. And I came up from Tulsa and we recorded the course and Blake and you and I have some of the greatest memories of you know, wearing shirts and no shorts, just sweating in a Airbnb recording that first course and just 30 hours of course recorded over five days, just 10 hour <laughs> shoot days. And, um, but like we invested money in all of this stuff and paying Blake and paying for all these things without any guarantee, because we thought worst case scenario of all this money flops, we're at least helping people and we're we would do this if we didn't get paid to do it and the reason that we get paid to do it is so we can do more of it you know and so Mm -hmm. um and that course launched and people started to buy it and it was like oh good we made enough money i remember that like break even day where it was like we sold enough of these things to like break even and then it was like oh we're still selling more and i remember that last day of the course being open and selling 20 or 30 courses and just being like this is this is unreal that this many people trust us. And then the feedback started coming from the course of people. Like I remember Kylina Erickson, like the first week after she bought the course, she was like, I did the, I did exactly what you said in the business module. And I just booked my first $5,000 wedding and they added $3,500 to the budget. And like we just seeing those people take what we've had put together and work so hard on and it being out in the world and their response to it. And it made a, good chunk of money like and it was awesome because it was 15 months of work Mm -hmm. so the idea of you shooting with me january of 2018 all the way until april of 2019 was like the first time we wrote a check to nick and to john was april of 2019 2020 april 2020 2020. that's right it was it was oh yeah it was two years it was two years 19 through 20 yes it gets blurry but it was, mm-hmm. it was two years mm-hmm. of me and Nick putting that work in. And if you're out there and you're listening, you're like, man, I've been doing my wedding video business for already for a year or two years, or I moved to a new market. And I, it's like, it just doesn't feel like it. Like we just kept taking steps. We knew we had something and we kept pushing and, you know, our wives would look at us like we we're crazy. And then that course came out. And then from then things have just really started to snowball. Like it was getting that boulder up to the top of the mountain and then pushing it over and being like, let's freaking go. Like, let's help more people. Like we can now help more people. We have a salary. We can spend more time on this. Like I remember getting our first salary check um, and being like, okay, I can spend less time on John Bunn films. I can spend more time doing this. We can start investing into um, different things and, and like, we, we don't have to go through like every single detail since then. But after that course launch, we had the idea the next year for our mastermind group. Mm-hmm. And I remember being with you in Wichita doing some batch recording of some episodes and like saying, I really think that this, uh, you know, a mastermind would be a great idea. And last year, 2021, we launched that and had 45 people join our mastermind group. And that, was an entirely different level. What do you have to add, Nick? 
Yeah. Um, it, and, and again, it, it comes back to, uh, you know, we really want to uh, serve people and we want to elevate the wedding film industry. And so, yeah, we we launched Mas- Mastermind in 2021, uh, which uh, weekly meetings we have. We brought in monthly guest speakers. Um, you know, it was a really great place to, uh, you know, have this community of people where they could get to know each other because a lot of them were very similar in business. You know, some were um, a little greener, some were them a little more experienced, but a lot of them, you know, the idea of, hey, I want to invest in myself. I want to get to know people. And then we had a big uh, retreat in January of 2022. Uh, then we launched a couple weeks later Mastermind for this year, and we basically doubled the size uh, of attendees uh, for Mastermind. And it's going well. We are in the throes of planning uh, the 20 this year's classes uh, retreat, um, and that's just going well. And I think, um, you know, a couple of the things that um, I look back on through this. So we had our core and, and stuff and, and we're continuing to add products and we're continuing to sell. Uh, but one of the things that we are always committed to that we want to do, and we haven't always done it perfectly and we haven't always done it the right way. Um, and that is, you know, uh, the idea of, uh, of giving back and stuff. And, and we know that, but we're constantly learning and we're growing and stuff that maybe we would have done on a whim, you know, now differently, we know it because we have experienced a lot of things. Uh, and, uh, as we're, I'm, I'm going to just segue this cause we've been going for about an hour. I'm going to segue this and kind of like, look future a little bit. Yeah. 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 Can I, yeah. Is, is that sure. okay? Um, yeah. So you didn't again, mention calibrate workshop, but other than oh, that, I forgot about calibrate workshop, man, we're just like, filmmaking workshop on the planet. <laughs> I, self-proclaimed so self-proclaimed <laughs> um no that yeah man that was that you was an incredible forward. thing where forward. yeah uh calibrate workshop we did it online it was in 2021 where we weren't sure that you know in-person workshops were going to happen again and so we're like hey let's try this and we did it uh it was successful we did it again this year it was successful we're going to do it in next year might as well yeah yeah it's helping so, people it, it, it's helping people. Um, but looking forward. So uh, w- one of the things is, is John and I continue to talk and, you know, we really want to make um, giving stuff and adding value and helping people continue to be that thing that's at the forefront of everything that we do. Um, I know in the last month, John has sent out, you know, a big email to our entire email list that's just saying, hey, I'm doing Instagram reviews today hit me up and I would be happy to, to review your Instagram. Hey, I'm doing website reviews, email, respond to this, you know, because we want to give back, but he's also doing it in a way of, you know, asking questions and people are, we're getting dozens, if not hundreds of emails from people responding to those things saying, Hey, thank you for this. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm going through. That's the type of stuff that we really want to get involved in. We really want to be a part of, um, you know, we have, uh, actually we, we've been talking this week about kind of our content calendar and the things that we're putting together and the stuff that we're putting out. And we have so many ideas about this fall leading into next year of things that we want to just give, uh, to our listeners and give to the community. And, you know, it's not one of those, Hey, you pay me, money and then you can get this thing okay for for this stuff you know with our podcast and with our youtube videos and things we have stuff that we want to tangibly give to you that you can use today that is just going to be helpful and so that that is a big push that is a big thing that we are consciously um consciously doing i don't know if if coming back to is the right word but maybe maybe ramping it up a little bit from what it has been this year, of course, John and I have been traveling. It has been crazy busy for both of us this year. So I don't know um, what <clears throat> I have things to add always, but please, yeah, do. like I just remember, uh, <coughs> like if you're thinking about how to film weddings as a business, um, we last year with the first mastermind, it was like, oh, there's some like guaranteed revenue. People pay a monthly fee to be part of this exclusive group. To be honest, to this next level education. And if you're not part of it or haven't been part of it, I would strongly recommend you consider it. It launches next January for our next class. But that gave us some stability and that plus our sponsors. And then we launch our course two times a year. Um, gave us enough revenue to like move to full-time basically and say, hey, we're both full-time. We can hire some team members. Um, and it just created stability for us where there was guaranteed revenue that covered all the things we wanted to do every single month because of Mastermind being a 12-month commitment. We launch our course in April and November. 
And other than that, you know, it's like we don't want to be the people that are constantly pushing to sell something. Um, and so, yeah, like we're looking at the rest of this year. Our course will be coming out again in November. Um, but it's like we're not pushing that so hard. Like it, it's 30 hours of everything you need to know to be a six-figure wedding filmmaker. And we love it and stand by it. And we will push it hard whenever November gets here. But our goal is to help as many people, whether or not they buy a $1,500 course from us, a $50 template, or take a free thing from us, or like we want to grow and help elevate the whole industry. More and more people are able to charge more now and seeing the value. It helps me in my wedding video business. It helps all of us in our wedding video business. And so um, looking at how to film weddings as an actual, just like this is our... like my mindset has shifted to it. And I've said this to Nick a lot. It's like, this is like a legitimate brand that we could take and grow it um, with more people on the team, more personalities on the team, more um, faces in front of the camera. There's a lot of stuff that we can do now because we have built this uh, foundation where we know that next year, mastermind, you know, there's a lot of you out there listening that, um, are considering joining. And we know that with the size of our audience, that most likely more people will join Mastermind next year than this year. We'll continue to grow healthy, um, healthily, healthfully. I don't know, but um, health, nope, I don't know. <laughs> Heed, <laughs> heated. Uh, anyway, we're going to continue to grow. And like we know that Mastermind's going to fund uh, our business, that our courses are going to fund our business. And so for me, I don't want to be the guy, Nick doesn't want to be the guy that's continually like, hey, buy this little thing, buy this little, you know, subscribe to me on this and pay this little $2 a month thing. Like we want the majority of what we're communicating during the year to be like, it's, it's crazy that we can do that now with all the other revenue that's coming in and say, we're just going to, we can focus on just giving a, an incredible amount of free resources. We hope mm -hmm. that you see the value in maybe taking the next step and saying, oh, I want to buy a template or I want to buy their course or I want to join Mastermind or join Calibrate. Like that's awesome. We are in a place now though with the way it is built and the way that it is running where we can be super pure in our intentions knowing that my bills are taken care of, Nick's bills are taken care of, what do we want to be doing? If we could do anything, what do we want to do? And that's where we're at right now. So that gets that gets me like business, you know, excited, hairs on the back of my neck standing up because hopefully you can see the trans like the transition that's happened over the last couple of months of us being able to really now I've gotten through my busy wedding season. I only have two weddings booked next year. I have five more to film this year, but it's like, oh, we're able to put out new YouTube videos and we're able to really lean into our email subscribers and help them and do website reviews and all these things. And there's no hidden motive except for we mm -hmm. just want to help. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and that's, and that's, I think the biggest thing that, um, as we tell you the story and we, and we tell you these things that, um, we, we do want to help and we want to, uh, help people. If this is your first week in wedding filming, or if you've been doing this for 10 years, like, Ultimately, that's what we want to do is to help you. Um, and uh, yeah, I know there's there's weird, weird feelings about people, you know, like, yeah, well, you guys are making money. So, you know what? And, and yeah, like we're putting in a lot of time and we're putting in a lot of energy. And so like we we should make money from that. Like just like any one of you out there would say, well, I'm not going to film a wedding for free because I have all. Well, I mean, it's kind of the same thing, but that doesn't change our North star. That doesn't change our goals of, we just really want to help people. And so, uh, that's our, um, you know, our vision can moving forward is going to be to help people. Actually, we released a YouTube V our, our last YouTube video. I think it was last, last week as of dropping this episode. Um, we gave away a personal wedding day questionnaire that you can send to your couples, you know, where you get personal information on them. But some of the things in there specifically is asking about music and how to help, how to help them. Um, or I'm sorry, asking about music, asking the kinds of music that they like that they don't like to help you, you know, in creating your film and that kind of thing. So, uh, make sure that you, we'll put the link to that in the description. I just kind of remembered that we did that or, we're kind of recording in the future, and so I hope the timing is right on this. So if it's not, forgive me on that. 
It'll be right. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be right. It'll be right. So, but yeah, we just, we want to continue to give and we want to continue to grow. And one of the things that John and I really, we really want it. We're not just saying it is reach out to us on Instagram at how to film weddings, send us a DM, ask us a question. You have something that's going on in your business or you don't know, um, you know, we would be happy to, uh, you know, respond just a little bit, uh, and, and maybe help you out a little bit. Let us know, um, you know, send us a DM, let us know when you started listening to it, you know, when, how has had a film weddings help you? Has it not helped you? You know, let us know, um, you know, some of those things so that we can continue to, uh, be this resource for other people. John, before I wrap it up, do you have anything that you would like to add here? I do. I would like to say thank you to you. Um, I, people ask from time to time, like, why not do this on your own? Why not own a hundred percent of this thing? And I've said it, uh, I've stole it from, I don't remember even who, but I'd rather have 50% of a watermelon than 100% of a grape. And I know that without you being part of this, uh, like, and your attention to detail with the brand, the look, the feel, the vibe, the editing, all that stuff, like it wouldn't be nearly what it is today. And like, I don't take a day for granted of like how awesome it is to get to do this with you. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like it's just, I'm really thankful for how all of this has worked out and I can't believe it's my life. And I wake up every day and it's like, I'm so excited to get to work and excited to do things because I know that there are people on the other side of this screen that are listening. And so, um, yeah, thanks, Nick. I couldn't, couldn't have done this. We couldn't have done this without each other. And, um, I'm just so, so excited to have not very many weddings at all next year. So we can just help more people. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for saying that. And I feel the same way. And I like, I, I genuinely do. And I'm genuinely thankful for you. I know it's one of those things where you said that now. So whenever I say it, it feels, you know, disingenuous, right. You know, um, but it's, it, it, it's very truthful. You guys like, uh, John is such a good, uh, business mind in thinking through a lot of the things. And I know that, um, if I were the one that made the calls on how to film weddings, it would have crashed and burned a very long time ago because I would have, um, I, I, I don't know. I just like, yeah, this feels right. This is good. And not thinking through a lot of things. And so John helps with that. Uh, we've been able to grow the team because of John and, you know, with, with people like, uh, Blake and Austin and Jessica and Emma on our team right now, you know, it's, we're able to do a lot more because of that. And I don't know if I would have had that foresight that John would have had to have those people, you know, and, and spend the time and energy that he does to, uh, get them going. And so, uh, so much of this, uh, the day to day stuff and, uh, the ideas and things are come from him. So, uh, I thank you a lot for that as well. And I'm very, uh, excited and happy that we get to do this together because who would have, who would have known that, you know, five years ago when you randomly sent me a DM, cause you saw a video that we would become good friends and spend a lot of time together. Um, and not just crazy. because, not just because, you know, we have a business together, but because we genuinely like each other. We do, I mean, we, you know, we do get along and we, love getting to hang out with each other and it's like a built-in you know friend to get to go to five six really cool places a year with and so yeah i mean it you're welcome and thank you right back at you like i'm so so stoked on this being legitimate and being like a thing that i see when i look at it i think this is just getting started like this mm -hmm. brand how to film weddings is going to help so many people in the future that don't even film weddings yet that haven't even thought about picking up a camera. And so um, as we're wrapping up, if you know somebody that needs to hear this or needs to be part of the how to film weddings community, just share this episode with them, share our stuff with them. We, uh, you know, we don't do this alone. We don't take it for granted that you're still listening right now. Um, so yeah, that's, that's our final call for the day is if you know somebody that needs this, share it with them, share them our Facebook group or share them Instagram. Um, but yeah, Nick, that's all I have for today. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Well, uh, thank you listeners for hanging on to this little bit longer episode today. Um, hopefully you've heard our hearts and you can hear that story and know, um, why it is that we do this because we want to, uh, you know, help, help people like you out in this industry. So, uh, again, reach out to us on Instagram at how to film weddings. If you would just like to connect with us or another thing that you could do if you're not a part is join our Facebook group, which is, you can find that at how to film weddings.com slash community. It's how to film weddings.com slash community. And that will take you directly to our Facebook group where you can be a part of the conversation. John, as always, it has been incredible to hang out with you. And until next time, we will see you. See ya.
Are you looking for a better way to deliver your wedding films to your couples? Look no further. Our friends over at Wedflow provide the most flexible video delivery solution on the market. Wedflow is pay per project with no large upfront cost or commitment, and you can cancel any time. Not only that, Wedflow offers a premium viewing experience for your couples. Accessible on mobile, tablet, desktop, as well as their very own suite of TV apps. Each project comes with 10 years hosting and an experience for your clients that will blow them away. Stop delivering your films the old fashioned way and give your couples something to rave about. Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow to check out Wedflow today.